Once again, happy Resurrection Day. Those that are in the house, those that are joining us online, I want to invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. We're continuing this series, The Blessed Life. People often ask me, man, how, how, do I, how do I get that? How do I get to be part of that? Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, he tells us how we can uh, walk in the kingdom, live in the kingdom, and really live the blessed life. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. How would you characterize your life, your home? Is your life seem like it's always swirling in conflict? Uh, or do you experience peace even in the midst of the conflict? In your home? What about your home? I mean, all, all, you know, all this is beautiful. But, but what's your home look like? Is it a place of conflict or is it a place of peace? The main idea that we're going to press in today is we will never experience the blessed life until we make peace. I would encourage you to write that down. We will never experience the blessed life until we make peace. So there's a difference between peacekeepers and peacemakers. Peacekeepers often avoid conflict to keep the peace. You know what I'm talking about? You try to do that. You have a, the hope strategy. It's, it's not a good strategy, just to let you know. If, you, if you're just hoping that it's going to work itself out, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not just going to work itself out. It takes work. Uh, but, but the peacekeeper is like, hey, I'm going to do whatever just, just to, to keep the peace. I'm going to keep the peace. When in reality, the best way to keep the peace is to embrace the conflict. That's the best way to make peace, to make peace. And, and so peacekeepers often avoid the conflict to keep the peace. They, they just hope that it will go away or they try to, you know, if I just keep brushing it under the rug long enough, you know. Uh, but peacemakers, peacemakers embrace the conflict to make peace. We must strive, the church must strive to be peacemakers, not peacekeepers. Again, Jesus says, Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Paul's writing to the church in, in Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. I would encourage you to write that reference down, Ephesians 4, verse 3, and he says, making every effort making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. He's writing to a church that in its day, there's a whole lot of nonsense creeping into the church. There's a whole lot of cultural collide happening in Ephesus. Uh, there's a whole lot of confusion because there's a lot of different pagan practices all around throughout Ephesus. And Paul's like, hey, church, wake up. There's a difference. And he instructs the church Make every effort to keep the unity, to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Uh, quickly, I want to share what a peacemakers do. I'd encourage you to write the first one down, all of them down, but the first one is peacemakers tell the truth in love. They tell the truth in love. Peacemakers tell the truth in love. Now, don't, don't like ignore that last part and just say, I'm a person that tells the truth. I'm sure you are. <laughs> uh, but a peacemaker tells the truth in love. What's your tone like in your home? What's your tone like in, in your marriage? Or is there a tone? You know, like peacemakers tell the truth in love. I'm not saying we don't tell the truth. No, no, no. The Bible is very clear of telling the truth. But it's how we tell that truth. I've sat down with many couples. And as I'm sitting down with them, I quickly find out the, the, some of the roots as to what's going on in, in their home and in their, their marriage as one gets loud really quick. And, uh, and then the one other typically starts shutting down. Only on a couple occasions have both just about knocked each other out. It, that was pretty exciting uh, one night. But... but, but uh, uh, Peacemakers tell the truth in love. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15. Later on in the chapter, Paul writes, he says, but speaking the truth in love. Hear this, not just my words. 
It's the word of God. Speak in the truth of love. Let us grow in every way into him who is, who is the head, Christ. But speak in the truth of love. Speak in the truth of love. Let us grow in every way into him who is the head, which is Christ. Man, you really want to be that more mature person. Then you're going to live out the scriptures. See, oftentimes we say we're mature, but our actions don't, don't they, they certainly don't act like it. You know, they're not living it out. Like, you just want to call yourself mature, but, but in love, in love, you're not acting maturely. Speak the truth in, in, in love. We want to really grow up in the faith and be most like Jesus. We must speak the truth in love. And so our tone absolutely matters. How we speak to our spouses, our children, the people we work with, our family members, those in life. Speak the truth in love. Second, what do peacemakers do? They apologize when they are wrong. Peacemakers apologize when they are wrong. Are you willing to step out and apologize when you've missed it? Or are you waiting for that other person to do the apologizing? I've sat down with many couples, and I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm just sitting here waiting, and it ain't coming. <laughs> and I'm like, we ain't going nowhere, you know, until there's humility. Till there's humility. But can I just tell you that uh, no one in, this, in the house today or online is right all the time, okay? Uh, hear me in love. I'm speaking the truth in love. You're not always right. Stop saying, stop thinking, you're always right. Because you're not always right. I hope you receive that in love and hear that in love, but you're not always right. How do I know that? Because you ain't perfect, man. There ain't no one perfect person in this universe other than the person of Jesus Christ who is risen from the grave and we've come to celebrate today. There's only one perfect person. His name is Jesus. So you are going to miss it from time to time. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. Peacemakers apologize when they're wrong. They admit to specific actions and attitudes with no excuses. It's one thing to admit to something, but it's a whole nother thing to follow it up with all the list of excuses. Can I just tell you, no one cares about the excuses, all right? Just admit to being wrong. Own it and say, God, help me. Help me to do better. Drop the excuses. We all got them. Man, we all got them. There are list as long as the toilet paper rolls out, you know? We all got the excuses, but peacemakers apologize when they're wrong. They admit to specific actions and attitudes with no excuses. And what does this require? If we're going to apologize when we, when we miss it, it requires two words. Would you write it down? To be honest and humble. Honest and humble. If we're really going to own up to our our mistakes, our misses, our flaws. We're going to apologize when we're wrong. We, we need to be honest and humble. One of the prayers that I pray every day is a scripture, and it simply states, clothe me in humility. Now, there are, there are many a days that like one minute after the prayer, I'm rethinking like, whoa, I just prayed humility and like, what is that prideful thought? <laughs> you know, like that was quick. And, uh, but clothe me, God, clothe me in humility. Clothe me in humility. Be honest. Be humble. James 4, verse 6, would you write that reference down? It says this, but he gives greater grace. He gives greater grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. I don't know about you, but, but I want that greater grace. <laughs> how, how, how do we get it? It's certainly not through pride. It's through humility that he pours out. We receive it through humility, through humility. Be honest. Be humble. James 5, 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is very powerful in it of effect. And, and so how are we to apologize, be peacemakers, be honest, be humble? Uh, it was told to me a while ago, I'm sorry is for mistakes. I'm sorry is for mistakes. Will you forgive me is for sin? Will you forgive me is for sin? Is there a, a repetition in your life where you keep doing the same old thing? 
and you keep saying, I'm sorry, or, or you come to the place where you recognize that it's a sinful behavior, will you forgive me? Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. You know, it's interesting how children take on the characteristics of their parents. You remember growing up? You remember the moment that you didn't want to be like your parent? <laughs> you remember that? I hear it often. There's some rare occasions that it's not so, but, but man, I don't want to be like them. I don't want to do them. And then you like shout just like they shouted. My, my dad was in town this past weekend, and, and he, he goes on these rants of singing these songs with the wrong words, and it's like totally me. I'm like going through the house just singing the wrong, and, and my girls picked up on and They're like, you're just like poppy. I'm like, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> and so, uh, but it's interesting how children take on the characteristics of their, of their parents. And so if that is true, if that is true, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. The question is, do you look like God? Do you act like God? Do you speak like him? For they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 26 says this, for through faith you are all sons of God in Christ Jesus. For through faith... You are all sons of God in Christ Jesus. Now, hear me clearly. Not everyone born into this world is a child of God. You are indeed a created being, created by God and for God, but you're not considered a child of God, a child of God, until you cross that path, until you own up to the, 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 the sin that's in your life and realize that he's the only one that can forgive you of all the sins. And then you're adopted into this family of God. You're adopted into the faith of God because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Then and only then are, do you become a child of God. I heard... Uh, you never look more like God than when you make peace. And so if we're going to be peacemakers, if we're going to see the blessings of God, if we're going to be a part of this blessed life, we're going to be called the sons, daughters, children of God, then we need to make peace. Third, what do peacemakers do? Would you write this down? They forgive uh, and they let go. They forgive and let go. There, there's, a, there's all kinds of crazy things out there circulating out there. You, you, you got to be careful. There's this idea of uh, 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 forgive and forget. It, it, it's, it's, it's garbage, okay? Can I just, can I just say it? it's garbage? There, there ain't no forgiving and forgetting. I mean, you can forgive that person, and then when you see that person, all, all, all kinds of things well up inside of you. You know what I'm talking about? All kinds of things. I, I told the 9 a.m., you know, you want to throat punch somebody when you see, you know, sometimes. And, and uh, it's like, whoa, God, forgive me. I, I got I to keep asking for the forgiveness, you know. But, the, but there is something to be said about forgiving and letting go. Oftentimes we forgive, we say we forgive, but we're holding on, man. We're walking through this life. And no wonder we feel so weighed down and, and so tired. Maybe that's where you find yourself today. Because it's possible that you've forgiven, but you're still holding on. Peacemakers forgive. And they let go. Forgive. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. Would you write this reference down? Let all bitterness, anger, wrath, shouting, slander be removed from you along with all malice. Maybe just take a personal evaluation of your life. Don't, don't, don't judge the person next to you, okay? Let, let, let them do that themselves. Just, just personal evaluation. Is any of this me? Does any of this live within me? Verse 32. And be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. How are we able to forgive people? Through Christ. It can't happen through Tim O'Carroll, I can tell you that much. It's got to be the power of God within me to forgive people that hurt me. And it's the same with you. We forgive because we've been forgiven. Forgive. And then let go. Romans chapter 12, would you write this reference down? Romans 12 verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, verse 18, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Live at peace with everyone. 
Don't repay evil for evil. Live at peace with everyone. If we're going to be peacemakers, we have to forgive and we have to, to let go. I, I'm concerned that there's people that say they forgive, but secretly like they're plotting and planning the demise of the person that's hurt them. I don't know how that's good for you or good for anyone. It's not. But the scripture says, do not repay evil for evil. Will you trust them into the Lord? Isn't that a part of forgiveness? Father, this person has hurt me. I forgive them and I'm going to entrust them to you. I'm going to entrust them to you. That you will save them, set them free, heal them, do whatever needs to be done in them. But I'm going to trust them to you. Forgive and let go. If we're going to be peacemakers, we need to forgive and let go. Lastly, what do peacemakers do? They, they work for peace. They work for peace. Again, there's a difference between being a peacekeeper and a peacemaker. A peace, peacemaker embraces the conflict in order to make peace. And that's what God is calling us into. Blessed are the, the, those who make peace. The, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of, of God. And so peacemakers work for peace. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7. The Lord is speaking through his prophet to the children of Israel who have been in captivity. They've been taken from the land that they knew, and they've been placed under slavery in a land that they did not know. They, they're, they're surrounded by a pagan culture, pagan practices. The people around them don't worship the same God they worship, don't hold to the same practices that they practice. The food's different, the smells are different, everything's different. And listen to what the Lord says to his children, Jeremiah 29, 7, pursue the well-being of the city I have deported you to. Pray to the Lord on its behalf, for when it thrives, you will thrive. Other translations will be pursue the peace, work for the peace and prosperity of, of the city that you've been sent to. Pray to the Lord on its behalf, for when it thrives, you will will thrive. Again, this is a message to the people of God living in a foreign land. They're not living there on their own choosing. They've been captured and sent there and bound to that place. And what does the Lord tell them? Plan how to escape? No. The Lord says, work for the peace and prosperity of this pagan place. What a message for the church today. To work for the peace and prosperity of this city, this county, this treasure coast, this country, the world. But you know, we will never experience peace wherever you live until there's peace in your home. It starts in the home. And so I wonder what your home looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like is is it a place of conflict or is it a place for peace? If it's a place for, of conflict, you don't have to settle there. Hear this today. Work for the peace in your home. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. I already said you never look more like God than when you make peace. I want to add on to that. And you cannot make peace apart from God. You cannot make peace apart from God. Isaiah the prophet said, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Isaiah 26, 3, You will keep the mind that is dependent on you in perfect peace, for it is trusting in you. Are you trusting in him today? Micah chapter 5 verse 5 says, he will be their peace. He will be their peace. Jesus says in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. He's getting ready to, to be crucified, to, 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 to ascend into heaven, to leave his disciples. They're scared to death. What does he say? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled or fearful. Peace I give to you. Peace is available today. 
no matter what you are going through. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. You who are far away, you who were separated because of your sin have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And so we've been brought near, we've been made a new creation because of Jesus, because of his finished work. Verse 14 says, for he is our peace. He is our peace who made both groups one and tore down the dividing wall of hostility in his flesh. That's what we celebrated on Good Friday, that our Savior loved humanity enough and he demonstrated his love to the world by being crucified on a cross for my sins, your sins. Our Savior went to the cross, his blood was shed and he died. Praise be to God. And on that third day, he rose victorious. I want to close by taking us to Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verse 1. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, that's Sunday, by the way, just in case you were wondering, like, uh, that's Monday for, no. Mary Magdalene and other Mary went to view the tomb. All the Marys got together, like Marys do. You know what I'm saying? They, they, all the Marys love getting together. Not, not much changes over the years. <laughs> Mary, they went to the, view the tomb. They went to view the tomb. They're, they're, they're heading to the tomb, expecting the tomb to still be sealed. There was a violent earthquake. Because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb and he rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. Could you imagine? <laughs> Earthquake hits, this angel descends, and he's like, I got this, rolls that thing away. I wonder all night if those guards were like talking, like, how many of us would it take to roll that thing? You know, like, he rolled back the stone, was sitting on it. His appearance was like the, like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. Are you, are you visualizing this with me? What a day. The greatest day in history. The guards were so shaken by fear I mean, these were like manly men. You know what I'm saying? Go on a whole rant about manly men, but we're not going to do that today. I mean, Roman guards, their, their main practice was whipping, ripping the flesh, and crucifixion. And they're watching guard. And the guards were so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. The angel told the women, don't be afraid because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Can you imagine being the Marys that day? They're like strolling up to the scene, strolling up to the tomb, this expectation, and then they see the stone is rolled, this angel sitting on the stone, and, and the guards are laid out like they're dead. And the angel told the woman, don't be afraid. Oh, sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> Verse 6. He is not here. For he has risen just as he said. He had been preparing all along. He had been preparing his disciples all along that this day was coming, that this was going to happen. It just hadn't connected to their, to their hearts. This is what Jesus is talking about. But you, could you imagine being the Marys that day? And it's like, ah, is this what he's talking about? He is not here, for, for he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Can you imagine being the Marys? Stooping into that, stooping into that empty tomb and, and seeing that, right, there is nobody here. 
then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, I have told you, so departing, verse 8, so departing quickly, departing quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. I love that. I love that. That would be you. That would be me. Like, I don't know what I just witnessed, but I'm so excited. I'm scared to death, but I'm so, you, you, have you ever been there? Some of y'all, when you gave birth to that child, you're like scared to death. And it's like, wow, that's the most exciting thing I've ever witnessed. So departing quickly from the tomb with great, with fear and great joy, they ran to tell his disciples the news. Just then, Jesus met them. <laughs> Jesus met them and said greetings. They came up, took hold of his feet, and worshiped him. The first response after hearing from the angels and heading back to go tell the news to the disciples, do, do you, don't miss the first response of the Marys. It was to worship him. Verse 10, then Jesus told them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Jesus said, greetings. Do not be afraid. Man, in the, one of the hardest moments of their lives, can you imagine being the, the mother, witnessing all of this, the confusion? Through all of this, Jesus says, do not be afraid. It's possible that it, in the hardest moments of life, in the most confusing moments of life, it is possible to experience the peace of God. Listen, you might be the only one that knows what's going on in your life, or you might have a small circle around you that know, but I want you to hear today that there is one above all that knows it all. And there is one, I mean, there's some people that might say they care, might say I'll always be there, but, but there is one who will always be there. And his peace is available right here, right now, today. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes, just all across this place and online just for a moment, and, and I ask you to do that just to limit whatever distractions there might be. Everything else that's going to happen today is going to happen. If it be God's will. You'll get to the other stuff, but don't miss these next few moments. Because these next few moments, I believe, could change everything. I wonder where do you stand with the Lord today? I wonder, have you ever surrendered over to the Lord Jesus as Savior? I wonder... Maybe you've surrendered over to him. You've been walking with him for a while, but, but, but maybe lately you find it's, it's, it's just a dry season and you, you're not living for him like you used to live for him. And, and today would be the day that you, you just fall at his feet and worship him. You just fall at his feet and worship him. Maybe you find yourself in, on the mountaintop today and, and you would just cry out to the Lord for whomever he would put in your heart is down in the valley and that the Lord would use you to help pick that person up and walk with them know that they're loved cherished by God and that the Lord has a plan and that there's no wasted season there's no painful season there's no season of conflict that we walk through that his peace is not available the peace that passes all understanding Guard our hearts and minds. That's what the scriptures say. And so right here, right now, would you cry out for that peace? Lord God, fill me up with that peace. I don't know all the answers. I got a lot of questions. But fill me up with your peace today. As people are praying across this place and online with this, if there's one here today that's never surrendered over to the Lord Jesus, today can be the day of salvation. Right here, right now, would you call upon him as Lord? Would you say something like this? Dear, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. You are the only Savior. Save me. Set me free. 
I trust in you completely. Forgive me of all my sins, all my past, all my failures. I trust in you today. I believe in you. You came over 2,000 years ago. You walked this earth. You were crucified on a cross. You were placed in a grave. And you rose from that grave. And you're alive today for me, for the world. So today, I surrender my life over to you. I'm going to follow you all the days of my life. If that's your prayer, would you thank him for saving you? Would you thank him for saving you? In a moment, there's, we're going to sing a song. And as we sing this song, there's going to be men and women. If you're in the house, that, down front here in the corners, that would love to pray with you. If your life feels like a, this is conflict, this chaos, when we start singing, would you step out of your seats and would you come to the front and allow someone to pray with you? If you made a decision to follow Jesus today, would you step out of your seat and would you come forward and let somebody know I made a decision to follow Christ? We want to pray with you, celebrate with you. If you're wondering what your next step is in all of this, would you have the courage to step out of your seat? If you're online with us, there's a host. Would you just put something in the chat? Let us know. Pray for me. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We love you because you first loved us. Thank you for the significance of this day. Thank you that peace is available. That peace is available. And so we trust you. We worship you. Help us even now as the Marys fell down and worshiped Jesus at his feet. Help us to do the same. Help that to be our response. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.